Carnegie Hall in New York City, the home of the world's greatest musical events. Today's event is one in a series of New York Philharmonic Young People's Concerts under the musical direction of Leonard Bernstein. And here is Mr. Bernstein. Good afternoon. Uh, last year around this time, if you remember, we did a program here with young soloists. And I mean young, the oldest was 16 and the youngest, if I remember, was nine. Also, we had our young assistant conductors of the Philharmonic conducting the orchestra accompaniments for these young soloists. Of course, they were a bit older, as conductors have to be, because to conduct means to lead. And it does take a certain number of years for a young person to develop qualities of leadership. So our young conductors were in their 20s or even early 30s. And then, of course, if you remember, I conducted too, Peter and the Wolf, remember? And I seemed like Methuselah after all those others. But anyway, that program turned out to be such fun, and we had so many excited letters from you all that we've decided to do one just like it again this year. In fact, we're going to do one every year, a program given over completely to young people just like you, who happen to be marvelous performers on the piano or the violin or whatever. Now, of course, the big trouble is that there are so many marvelous young performers, you wouldn't believe how many I've listened to and found worthy to perform with this great orchestra. It makes it very hard to choose. But we have chosen, and for this program, we are going to hear a brilliant young pianist from Korea and two Americans a fine cellist, and a really terrific soprano. And then, after all that, this Methuselah will conduct something special for you. Our first young genius is the cellist, a boy of 16 named Lynn Harrell. <laughs> Lynn, uh, Lynn looks more like a football quarterback than a cellist. But when he plays, he can make the cello sound as delicate as a girl or as powerful as, a, well, a football quarterback. Lynn is going to play the last movement of Dvorak's Cello Concerto, a wonderful piece filled with catchy Czechoslovakian tunes and rhythms, and yet a very noble symphonic work. The orchestra part will be conducted by our talented young assistant conductor, Eliakum Shapira, who comes to us originally from Israel, but as of last Monday, is a full American citizen. <laughs> Congratulations. I think you're going to be hearing a lot about both of these boys before very long. And here is the finale of the Dvorak Cello Concerto.
Our next young star is a Korean girl, also 16 years old, named Chung Cha Kim. Miss Kim came and played for me a few weeks ago, Chopin, as I've rarely heard it played, such life and passion and strength. So today, Chung Cha will play Chopin for you too, the slow movement of his beautiful piano concerto in E minor. And the conductor this time will be the gifted Russell Stanger, who comes from my town, Boston.
I tell you, there are a lot of pretty girls who play the piano, but they don't all play pretty like that. And now, now we come to something new for these young performers programs, a singer. We don't usually have one, we didn't last year, because very young singers are very hard to find. It's only natural because you can begin learning the cello or the piano at the age of five or even three if you want, but a singer can't begin really to study his instrument, so to speak, until he has one, which means until his voice has developed. So a young singer, like a young conductor, also has to be a bit older. And Miss Veronica Tyler, the lovely American soprano who will sing for us now, is practically an old lady. She's 22. <laughs> And our conductor this time is not much older than that, Mr. Gregory Millar. <laughs> Mr. Millar is an American whose parents were Greek originally. So you see between Korea and Israel and Greece and Boston, we have quite an international gathering here today, a sort of musical UN. Ms. Tyler is going to sing two charming arias, the first by the Italian composer Puccini and the second by the Italian-American composer Giancarlo Menotti. The Puccini aria is from his beautiful opera La Boheme, and it's the song of goodbye, addio, which the heroine Mimi sings in the third act. The aria by Menotti, Miss Tyler will explain to you herself.
a goodbye song. So now I shall sing a hello song from Minotti's gay little opera, The Telephone. The heroine of this opera is a girl named Lucy who has one great weakness. She loves to talk for hours on the telephone. Hello, hello, oh Margaret, it's you. I am so glad you called. I was just thinking of you. It's been a long time since you called me. Now it's my turn to conduct, and we're going to play an exciting piece especially written for young people by the famous modern British composer Benjamin Britten, who almost seems to be named after the country he comes from, Mr. Britten from Great Britain. The piece is called The Young Person's Guide to the Orchestra, and a very young person indeed is going to guide you through this music. Mr. Master Henry Chapin, age 12.
In order to show you how a big symphony orchestra is put together, Benjamin Ritten has written a big piece of music, which is made up of smaller pieces that show you all the separate parts of the orchestra. These smaller pieces are called variations, which means different ways of playing the same tune. First of all, he lets us hear the tune, or the theme, which is a beautiful melody by the much older British composer, Henry Purcell. Here is Purcell's theme, played by the whole orchestra together. lets you hear the four different families of the orchestra playing the same personal theme in different ways. First we hear the woodwind family, the flutes, the oboes, the clarinets, and the bassoons. <laughs> comes the brass family, the trumpets, the horns, the trombones, and the tuba. Now Mr. Britton arranges the personal theme for the string family, the violins, the violas, the cellos, the double basses, and of course, the harp. And finally, the percussion family. All those drums and gongs and things you hit. After this, you will hear the theme by Purcell played once more in its original form by all four families together, that is, the whole orchestra. Britain begins to write his variations, one for each instrument in turn. He begins at the very top of the woodwind ladder with the little piccolo and the two flutes. <laughs> down the woodwind ladder, we reach the oboes, which have a piercing, sad quality. Next, the clarinets, which are so athletic they can play almost anything, and they make a beautifully smooth, mellow sound.
down at the bottom of the woodwind ladder are the bassoons, the largest members of the woodwind family with the deepest voices. variation starts at the top of the string ladder with the violins. They play in two groups, first and second. Charges in violins, and so they are deeper in tone. than violas, and their tone is rich and warm and wonderful. And at the bottom of the string ladder, we find big, heavy, grumbling double basses. a whole string ladder in itself because it can play as high as a violin and as low as a double bass.
Mr. Britton comes to the blast ladder, he begins right in the middle of it with the horns, which can also play very high and very low. <laughs> Trumpets are the highest brass instrument. I guess everybody knows their sound. trombones have a low, heavy, stern voice. The bass tube is even lower and heavier. In fact, the lowest brass instrument of all. an enormous number of percussion instruments. We can't play them all, but here are the most familiar ones. First, the kettle drums, often called the timpani. Now the bass drum and the cymbals. So you see, the composer Benjamin Britten has taken the whole orchestra apart. Now he puts it back together again in a fugue. The instruments come in one after another in the same order as before, beginning with the piccolo. And at the end, when all the instruments have finally come in, the brass will play old Henry Purcell's melody, while the other instruments go on playing young Benjamin Britten's fugue.
from Carnegie Hall, another in the New York Philharmonic Young People's Concerts, under the musical direction of Leonard Bernstein, has been presented by Shell Oil Company. Sign of a better future for you. This is the third in a series of four concerts in the Young People series. The next concert will be presented three weeks from today on Sunday, April 9th, at which time Mr. Bernstein will present a program on folk music in the concert hall. The preceding program was pre-recorded at Carnegie Hall, New York City, and was produced and directed by Roger Englander.